Well, thanks very much, Kieran, and I begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet and pay my respect to the elders past, present and emerging and recommit on behalf of my party to the implementation of the Uluru Statement from the Heart in full. Uh, to uh, Mike Green, the incoming CEO of the United States Study Centre, congratulations on your appointment and I thank Simon Jackman uh, on his work. Uh, to Ben Syme, MG, uh, wonderful to have you here, sir. I thank you very much uh, for uh, being with us this evening and honouring us with your presence. Uh, to former Prime Minister, or, or can I say at a US event, Prime Minister John Howard. I, I, I always quite like being in the United States because I get called Deputy Prime Minister. <laughs> it's a great tradition and another example of something that we should import from our friends in the United States here. And Prime Minister Howard agrees with me, I'm sure. The other distinguished guests, ministers, shadow ministers, members of parliament, members of the diplomatic corps, uh, one and all. The 70th anniversary of ANZUS provides us with an opportunity to reflect on Australia's most important relationship. As Labor leader, I'm very proud that that was a relationship whose strength can really be traced to the great John Curtin, who in 1941 turned to America in our darkest hour, when our very being as a nation was under threat. That support, of course, has continued throughout Labor. As a minister in the Gillard government, I was very proud that Prime Minister Gillard secured the rotation of US Marines through Darwin, greater utilisation of our northern airfields, and increased US Navy use of HMAS Stirling. As Labor leader, I have offered strong bipartisan support for AUKUS, the, in the use, including the use of nuclear powered submarines and the work of the Quad. And I was very pleased uh, to convey this personally, along with uh, Penny Wong, my shadow foreign minister and leader of Labor in the Senate, to Secretary of State Blinken in Melbourne uh, just a couple of months ago, and to renew our acquaintances with an old friend, Kurt Campbell. We hope to see US regional engagement deepen under its recent Indo-Pacific strategy. This strategy, an integrated defence and deterrence approach, have demonstrated the US commitment to our region. I want to engage with US thinking on the Indo-Pacific economic framework, but I also want to engage very strongly with our friends in the United States in joint action when it comes to climate change. We know that this is particularly important in enhancing our status in our region, which for many countries is an existential threat to their very existence. Whilst our focus has correctly been on our region, Russia's brutal and unprovoked attack on Ukraine has raised a whole new set of questions for the global order. It has reminded us of the importance of genuine democracies working together. But it's also been a reminder with the negative role of China and its failure to protect the core principles of the UN Charter as a permanent member of the Security Council, it has provided a stark confirmation that the position of China in global politics but also in our region has indeed changed. I commend US leadership on the response to Russia's illegal aggression together with NATO and the European Union. The Biden administration's focus on alliances has been critical. We must work together on building a regional order which respects all state sovereignty and which creates economic prosperity. The US alliance will remain central to Australia's foreign, defence and national security policy. We need to strengthen the partnership in response to our rapidly changing environment, not the least of which is in our own region. 
Recently in Darwin, I attended the commemorations of the 80th anniversary of the bombing of Darwin. At that, in, before the Australian commemorations, I attended the sombre uh, ceremony around the 80th anniversary of the sinking, of course, of the USS Peary. 92 American servicemen lost their lives that day. It is a reminder that ever since those days, those dark days of World War II, uh, this alliance has been our most important. It will remain our most important. We need to continue to work together on ways in which our cooperative and joint approach can spread the values that we hold dear, the values of democracy, the values of human rights, the values of respect for international law, the values of economic, social and environmental activity which enhances the living standards and the livelihoods of those people in our countries, but seeks to spread that throughout the world. This alliance is a force for good. It is important that it be maintained and in any role that I have now or in the future, it will remain a central commitment and something that I hold dear, something that I've had the great privilege of uh, building on as a former Deputy Prime Minister, but also as a participant in important forums like the Australia-US Leadership Dialogue. I look forward to working with you into the future and I thank you and congratulate you. Third time lucky. We have had this in our diary three times, this event. Uh, but having it uh, the night before the budget just shows how smart our US friends are. Thanks very much.